Problem 5-91. Factor each expression below. Letter A. x squared plus 8x. So we've got a binomial here. Remember the first question that you should always ask yourself when factoring is, is there a greatest common factor between the terms? In this case, there is. There's an x in this term. There's an x in this term. It's not very hard to do this. I don't know why a lot of people struggle with it, but it's if you look at it there, there's definitely an x there. So remember, this is like undistributing. You're factoring it out. It doesn't disappear. We're going to say here x, that's our greatest common factor. x times what was x squared? Oh, well, that was an x. And then we have plus x times what was 8x? That's an 8. So we end up there with x times the quantity of x plus 8. Letter B. We have x squared y squared minus 81z squared. When we look at this one, binomial again. If we look here, perfect square. x squared is a perfect square, y squared is a perfect square, and we're multiplying them. So the product of any two perfect squares is another perfect square. If you think about it, 4 is a perfect square, right? So that's the same thing as saying like 2 squared. 9 is a perfect square. That's the same thing as saying 3 squared. So this is almost like saying 2 squared times 3 squared. Well, 2 squared times 3 squared would be the same thing as 4 times 9, which is 36, which is also a perfect square. So that's like saying times 6 squared. But So you just need to make sure you understand this is a perfect square. This is also a perfect square. 81 is a perfect square. That's like saying 9 squared. And z squared is a perfect square. So what we're looking at here is a difference of squares because we have perfect square perfect square and remember that rule if you learned it as a rule was saying a squared minus b squared would factor into a plus b or the square root of this plus the square root of this and the square root of this minus the square root of this so the shortcut there, we could look at it. The square root of x squared y squared is going to be xy. The square root of 81z squared would be 9z. And one's got to be plus, the other one's got to be minus. There is our factored version for letter B. Let's move on to C here. We've got 2x squared plus 14x minus 16. The first thing that jumps out to me here is all the numbers in this are even, which means there's a specific number that goes into each of them. That would be the number 2. So we're going to factor out a greatest common factor of 2. What's left? 2 times what is x? 2x squared? That would be x squared plus 2 times 7x gives us 14x. And 2 times negative 8 gives us negative 16. Now we're going to look at this trinomial. This is one that's pretty easy. It jumps out to you and says that it can be factored into two binomials. So let's go ahead and do that. We've got 2. And I can say here um, my x term x squared, you know, in order to get that, I'm going to multiply the first two parts of my binomials together to get x squared. That's the same thing as when we're looking at the generic rectangle, we're saying, how do we get x squared here? Well, that has to be x and x. There's an x and there's an x. And we're looking here at what values of negative 8 or what factors of negative 8 have a sum of positive 7, while well, we're thinking about the factors of 8 and 1. Oops, that's not going to look like a 1. I need to fix that. Let's 
So we want to end up with more positives than negatives. So we're going to have x plus 8 and x minus 1. So if we think about that, that would have come from having um, we'd have a negative 8 up here. We said x, this would have been a positive 8x. This would have been a negative 1x there. If you had done the uh, generic rectangle version, that's what you would have had up here. But taking a look now, we've got 2 times the quantity of x plus 8 times the quantity of x minus 1. That is our completely factored expression right there. I hope I didn't confuse you with this. I was just trying to help you relate it there since I didn't actually do the generic rectangle method. The last one here, we've got 3x squared minus 11x minus 4. Now with these ones here, when you have just an x squared, you should be able to factor it without having to go this route. With these ones here, it's okay to go that route. I think it, sometimes it helps it go a little faster if you do use the generic rectangle. And I'll use it on this one. First of all, 3, 11, and 4. Well, 3 and 11 are prime, so we definitely don't have a greatest common factor there. So I'm going to take it here. I'm going to set up the generic rectangle for anybody who wants to use that and maybe forgot how to use it. So I've got my first term in the bottom left corner. That's 3x squared. My last term goes in the top right. That's negative 4. I take the product of 3x squared and negative 4, and I write it up here, negative 12x squared. And then we know that these two uh, numbers, when we multiply them, they get this. Well, when we multiply these two numbers, they should also give us negative 12x squared. These two numbers are the same as what we're going to have right here. The sum of these two numbers should be what we have down here, and that's going to be our middle term, negative 11x. So factors of negative 12x squared that have a sum of negative 11x would have to be negative 12x and positive x. So let's plug those in here, negative 12x and a positive x. Our greatest common factor between 3 and negative 12 is 3. Between x squared and x is going to be x. So 3x times what is 3x squared? Well, that's going to be an x. x times what is going to be x? That would be a 1. And 3x times what gives us negative 12x? That would be a negative 4. So we've got here pretty much what we're going to need. We've got 3x plus 1 and x minus 4. That is our factored answer for part D. So this is problem 5-91. We were just doing a little bit of practice factoring some different types of problems here. Remember to look for your greatest common factor first. Look to see if you've got a difference of squares. And then, you know, you have your choice of methods there for factoring your different trinomials. This is Mr. Boyd. Hope that this helped. Uh, if you have questions, make sure you ask in class. Thanks. Bye.